Hello everyone and welcome to episode 15 of Enigmatica 2 Expert. How are you doing? So I was thinking that since my mind is still fresh and hopefully your minds will be fresh by the time I release this episode, we should finish our project with the fusion reactors. So right now we have an active fusion reactor which takes hydrogen and gives us deuterium which is not rendering for some reason. Ah, okay, I thought it's empty. <laughs> anyway. It also makes 1 million RF, which there's not much I can do about it. I don't know how to make it much more efficient and uh, yeah, so for now that will do. Our goal is to get neutron fluid in order to make neutronium ingots and avoid getting tiny piles of neutron through not neutron collectors. So these recipes are relevant to us. If we put deuterium inside the fusion reactor, we will get 5 millibuckets of neutron fluid per 2 bucket of deuterium. If we mix it with tritium, we will get 10 millibuckets, which is preferable, I guess. <laughs> but the problem is making tritium. In order to make tritium from nuclear craft, I am going to need another fusion reactor, which I don't want to do. And if I want to get it from the uh, mechanism way, I'm going to need thermal evaporation plant, which I'm not going to do that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to mix deuterium with molten boron 11. And getting that is very easy because we just need a melter as well as a centrifuge. And we just put molten boron inside, we will get molten boron 11 as well as molten boron 10. We only need this one and it's a 1 to 1 ratio, which is good. That's nice. So we need molten boron 11 because we already have deuterium. Let's get started. So I have an ender chest here which is hooked up to our ME system and it's full of boron. Then the boron goes inside this melter, gets melted and then it goes inside the centrifuge and we get molten boron 11 as well as molten boron 10. Molten boron 10 we're voiding through a trash and molten boron 11 goes inside the reactor. So this reactor has molten boron 11 as well as deuterium. And the only thing we need to do is to charge it up. It seems that with only two quantum entangler porters, this is going to be very slow. So I'm going to sacrifice two more. And again, this one is wrong. We put it up here. So the electromagnets are fully charged and the only thing remaining, we have to charge the reactor. 8,000 Kelvin and I brought a lever. So here, work. Yeah, it is working. So the temperature is climbing and when it reaches a certain point, we should generate RF. Um, let's wait, I guess. Oh, we are already getting helium and neutron fluid. That is awesome. Is everything keeping up? You also seem to be keeping up. So our awesome generator is generating 32 RF per tick right now because it's still heating up. I believe at this stage if I find a zombie, put him inside the chamber and gather his fart and put it inside the gas burning generator, it will be much more efficient. But uh, we need neutron fluid, which we're getting by the way. That is good. We ran out of LP again and that was a very long journey with nausea. Oops, where is it? Ah. We're fine. I'm alive. Now that the cycle is complete and we are having everything we're going to need, including the neutron fluid, and we are waiting for that reactor to heat up, I thought in the meantime we should spend some time and make this place less ugly, because this is horrible. Aha, uh -huh, so it's almost over. Um, this is the general idea. I still have to work on the details, so don't worry. It's not going to remain like this, but uh, I had to make a few changes. For instance, the second fusion reactor is now here. It used to be over there, but I had to switch it because it was not symmetrical and it was making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> anyway, deuterium is now being directly pumped from this fusion reactor to the second one and we're using this tank for neutron fluid in order to make the neutronium ingots. Um, if we want to go through, this is our water tower which makes hydrogen, like so. Where's the water? As I was saying, this is our water tower and we make hydrogen here, goes into this tank then goes into this fusion reactor, we get deuterium and 1.3 million RF, then deuterium comes into this fusion reactor, we get neutron fluid, 
And then I thought, okay, it's not symmetrical, we need another area. So this is our nuclear waste area, and that's a uh, mutagen from uh, Gender 3. <laughs> uh, maybe we make a refinery for it, because, uh, I don't know, we are responsible citizens, so we should not leave it like this. But generally, this is the idea, and I invested a lot of steel in this, as well as hemp. So, it was very expensive. Talking about hemp, I decided to make a small hemp farm. I did not want to use a garden cloche because I love how hemp looks in this game and uh, well I thought a garden of it should look nice. Also farming it is relatively easy, you just walk, you break the plants and you get hemp. Unfortunately, I realized that there's something wrong. Um, I think these are called crop circles and maybe aliens have visited us and they want to convey a message. I could not figure it out though. Maybe we should see it from the above? Yeah, I still don't know what they want to say. Good thing that we're getting into advanced rocketry, because uh, we can go to them and ask them what they wanted to say. Talking about advanced rocketry and uh, visiting aliens, we are going to need to get titanium ingots. In this mod pack, titanium ingot is craftable until we go to another planet and be able to mine the ore. It is made inside an advanced metallurgic fabricator and... Uh, well, we have everything except salt and liquid chlorine. Liquid chlorine comes from chlorine and I'm guessing chlorine comes from Brian. Yes, so we are going to need another thermal evaporation tower or something, but while we are doing this, I thought we also need to make draconium crystals, because we are going to need draconium crystals in order to make this ultimate crafting table, as well as we need the slurry in order to make some ultimate crafting. So, for the slurry we are going to need, okay, this one sulfuric acid, then we're going to need sulfur trioxide which comes from oxygen and sulfur dioxide which just requires sulfur. So we might as well do both of them at the same time. Um, I just need to gather some machines. Um, I'll be right back. So this is our 12th uh, thermal evaporation tower and we are getting Brian. So if we put Brian inside an electrolytic separator, we should get some stuff. Ah, it needs power. Now we should get some stuff. Yes, we get chlorine and sodium, which we don't need. So this chlorine is now a gas and in order to convert it into the liquid, which we are going to need, we are going to need a rotary condensator and a tube. Do you work? Okay. So, oh, no, 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 no. You just need power and you should work. Good. So, this is chlorine and that is good. Now we should start making the draconium crystals. Oh, and uh, by the way, these two processes are separate. Uh, these have nothing to do with each other. I just wanted to make them in the same place. Otherwise, uh, chlorine is already done and we don't need it anymore. I don't know how much chlorine we're going to need, but for transportation I'm going to use drums. Um, I don't want to make long pipes because the world is getting laggy and I have problems with ender tanks, so I think this should be fine. So I guess in order to make the draconium crystal, the first thing we are going to need is a chemical oxidizer to make sulfur dioxide. And then we have to make sulfur trioxide. In order to make this sulfur trioxide, we are going to mix that sulfur dioxide with oxygen and we should get something if we give it power okay now we need to mix sulfuric acid and the sulfuric acid we will get it from mixing water vapor as well as sulfur trioxide which we ran out so i have more sulfur we put it inside here you will get it right yeah we are getting more sulfuric acid, so that is fine. We just needed one piece of ore to test this. So if we put boron, we will get boron slurry and then we have to wash it. So a chemical washer, which also needs water. And if we add power to it, you should give me clean boron slurry. That is good. And we just need you. 
And if we put the clean slurry inside the chemical crystallizer, we will get crystals. It works the same way for each ore and that's basically it. The only question is how do we make it look nice and how do we automate it? I should sleep first probably. So this is as compact as I could make it. We need to give this guy sulfur automatically from our applied energistic system and the ore goes here I think. Yeah. And then we will get the crystals and they will go inside an ender chest and life will be great. Now we need to clean it up. There is a block called resistive heater. I don't know what it does but we don't have a roof so maybe if we give it power it will keep us warm. This guy is also finished and it's not fully automatic we just have to supply it with sulfur through this cache and supply it with ores. So we put the ore here. They go inside the system, I have a small access hatch and they get processed and the result will go inside this ender chest. So it functions and I'm very happy with it. Also for chlorine I decided to make a loading station. So you press the button, breaks the drum, gives it to you and you can put a new one. Oh, which one was full? Oh that one. Now that we have chlorine, it's time to make the advanced metallurgic fabricator. We are going to need this. Uh oh, oh, it's pulsating crystal. Okay, that's easy to do. Uh, let me craft it. So at first I thought that this guy is going to be the machine, but uh, no, it's just a blueprint. It tells you how to make the machine. And uh, well, I can, I guess, make everything, but it needs six blocks of fiery metal, which we get from the twilight forest. And uh, yeah. So in order to make titanium, I have to go to the twilight forest. I've been thinking, so if we want to go to the twilight forest, we need a nanobot beacon because I'm not producing food and we need saturation and also we can get other buffs, which is always nice. We also, I think, need a bow um, because of the ghast guy. I, I forgot his name. So either Fluxed Infused, that's difficult, <laughs> or Supremium. Huh. Oh, that looks cool. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, okay, let me gather some stuff and I'll be right back. Well, I wanted to make an Anobot Beacon this episode anyway, so let's do it. I forgot how chunky these guys are. <laughs> it took me a while to make enough space. Anyway, we have tons of health, we have tons of buffs and um, I will decorate this later on. But for now we have to make a bow and go to the twilight forest. Well, I think we have everything we are going to need. I upgraded my satchels to higher tier ones. We have a lot of mob imprisonment tools, a lot of torches, a lot of arrows and a bow. So we should be fine, I guess. Let's go and check it out. So this place is loading in and it's going to be incredibly laggy. Um, my idea is that I'm going to gather some, I don't know, birds for decorations later on. And then I'll be also gathering some trees and also doing the quests. Let's see how it goes. I forgot that in order to fight the Hydra, I need to eat this. <laughs> so I need to get hungry. Good, we're fine now. And we can put you back so that we will have our buffs. Good.
I thought going to the Twilight Forest is going to be time consuming, which actually took me two and a half hours because you have to find the bosses and uh, the maze is actually a maze. <laughs> anyway, I thought making the seeds is going to be time consuming because they require starlight infusion, but no, <laughs> no. Uh, making the machine is very time consuming. I just want to show you something. So these are the patterns that I had to make specifically for this machine. This does not include the patterns that I already put inside the machine. So these are just crafting patterns. Yeah. I just want one titanium. I don't want anything else. It also requires six pockets of mutagen and luckily I made some mutagen for that nuclear waste area. <laughs> so that was a lucky thing. So you should be complete. Uh, oh, you need the blueprint? Uh-huh, uh-huh. How do you work? So this guy has power, it has chlorine, and if I put the recipe here, will you work? So it does work. It requires a lot of RF, so I had to use a cryostabilized flux. What's up with these guys? What are you, dwarf? Okay. Uh, we need a lot of these machines and uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to automate them. Uh, we need a machine room for these guys. So the cow is thirsty. If I give you water, will you give me milk? No. You're a girl, right? Yeah. So how do you milk them? Do you milk? You're also a girl? Okay. Because uh, we need goat milk for extreme crafting and I, I know this is not a goat, but I don't know how to milk these guys What are you? Oh, you're a normal sheep. Okay huh. This machine requires salt and I have no production of salt So we are going to use a sequential fabricator from thermal expansion We upgrade it. We give it the augment and three of you and lag <laughs> And we also need to provide you with water. So I'm guessing we can use this sink. We give you power and then we try to make a recipe. So it needs water and it needs a pot. Good. Start making me salt. Okay, that's good. So as usual, after we have 10,000 salt, this machine will turn off and we will not have an overflow of salt. I actually made a mistake with some of these machines and I have like, I don't know, half a million glass. <laughs> uh, I, I realized it very late. Also, it's going to need magnesium ore. If you put eight dust together with a stone inside the combiner from mechanism, it will give you the ore. We just went it through the system. So I have prepared a pattern for it. This is not a very economical way of doing this, but I have limitless magnesium and nuclear craft ores. So I don't really care if it's not efficient. Uh, I don't want ores inside our ME system. So I process everything before they come in and I don't want to make an extra channel or something for them. That's fine if we lose a little bit. So if we order 100 magnesium ores, this should work, right? Yep. Perfect. Do you guys remember that one or two episodes ago we made this reactor area and I said that we are going to process fuels from nuclear craft in order to make Californium 250 which we are going to need for extreme crafting. And then I forgot and never did anything about it. So I thought we should start working on this area before finishing this episode. So we are going to make the fusion reactor first and then we see how many fuels we can process before finishing the episode. I'll bring you back shortly. So I'm thinking that this is the design that I'm going to work with. Um, we will have plenty of space for coolers if we need them. And it should be fine, I guess. So we put one of you here on each corner and that should give us some coolant. And also we have the cryotium cooler, which has to touch two of these cells. And that was the wrong one. So uh, then we make helium coolers, redstone coolers, and I think this should be fine. The whole idea is to go through fuels very fast, not to have an efficient reactor. And uh, I think this should be fine.
In addition to cryotium coolers and the indirium coolers that we had, I also made some redstone coolers and the only criteria for them is that they have to touch a reactor cell. And then later on we can also hook them up to liquid helium coolers because they have to touch an active redstone cooler and a reactor casing. So that should cool it, I guess, much better. And uh, we just form it and see how much we are cooling the reactor. Okay, that's not bad. Minus 9,700. Um, I, I also need another column of this. I ran out of material, but uh, for now, this will do. I made a small applied energistic system in order to store the fuels as well as doing some of the auto crafting for us. The drives are actually down there. <laughs> um, anyway, the first fuel that we are going to process will be the LEU fuel, which we have done already. We're going to provide this melter with uranium. It will make it into molten uranium, which goes inside the centrifuge, which we will get uranium-238 as well as uranium-235. Then we pump the liquids inside these ingot formers and we will get the uh, ingot type. And then they should go inside this ender chest, which I forgot to uh, hook it up. So there you go. And voila. So they go inside this ender chest and they will be imported into our applied energistic system. And then we can make a pattern for LEU fuel and put it here. And of course we put the fuel inside the fission reactor and wait for it to burn out and get depleted. When we get the depleted fuel, we put it inside a fuel reprocessor to get the other isotopes of uranium. And then they go inside this ender chest and into our applied energistic system. So that's the idea. We already had a lot of depleted LEU fuel and I put them inside the fuel reprocessor and these are the items that we're getting. Uranium-238 as well as plutonium and neptunium. We have to figure out how to reach Californium and I think we have to go through like six tiers of fuel or seven tiers of fuel. And this is the idea I have. Uh, we have to go step by step. Alright guys, I think it's also time to wrap up the episode before it gets super long. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.